Welcome to DOS Geek. I'm going to show you some of the things that you can do with a Chromebook. Some of you may already know this and be like, yeah, duh, obvious. But what I want to show is what are some of the capabilities of a low cost device like this. I'm going to show you some local apps that you can utilize to program on your machine. But I'm also going to take a second to talk about things like Cloud9, which is a cloud based programming environment which will allow you to program in languages like JavaScript, Python, PHP, Ruby, Go, C++, all of those type of languages. Whereas that may be a little more difficult for some of those languages to do with apps that are in the Play Store or on the Web Store that you can get in a Chromebook. But there are Cloud9 is browser-based. It's also extraordinarily cheap. Now, if you were to use something like AW9 for four hours per day, 20 days out of the month, then you would cost you $1.85 here. So obviously this is an awesome solution, very, very cheap that you can use to program in more advanced languages or if the options that I'm showing you uh, won't work. Now I am not an expert coder by any stretch of the imagination. I, I basically hack other people's code to get the things that I need to get running in HTML uh, JavaScript and CSS. But with that said, I was able to do some development and let me show you some things here as I've learned. And all of this has been done completely on the Chromebook. So this is the site. I did a video on developing websites within Linux and some of the tools to use. So we're kind of doing something similar here with Chrome OS, although eventually I'm just going to put Linux on this. And so I could utilize those tools, which are more powerful, but there's still some really cool options within the Chromebook if that's not something you're willing to do because there are some risks and security issues with utilizing Crouton based on how you have to change the go into developer options and change some of the security to allow Linux to uh, basically boot onto your Chromebook. So that's not an option for everybody, although we will be doing it here. So with that said, if you're stuck utilizing Chrome OS, these will be some options for you. So back then, my coding ability has obviously you know, slowly progressed and it's still not great because I can't dedicate too much time to it. But in either case, you can see this is kind of my favorite Linux software, favorite distributions. You got basic HTML with some text links. This does look great on mobile and things like that. So you've got some good CSS applied here, but nothing fancy or that anybody would be like, wow, great website. But this is kind of ugly the way things are laid out into these categories. Some of the things aren't even lined up uh, fantastically, but there's a lot of great software in here if you're interested. Now, this is the new page that I've done just in Chrome OS. Now, it's not that you can do uh, things more powerful. Obviously, my skills have improved over time, and I wanted to see, utilize those skills to see what I could do with a Chromebook. And this is the result here. And I showed this a little bit in the last video talking about software, but you can see we have sortable uh, tables here. Uh, that you can sort by any of the categories. It looks a little more clean. Again, my skills aren't fantastic, but it's a lot cleaner than the other page and gives you a lot more information on each individual app. Plus it has links to each of the apps within there. So a much better design, uh, not ideal, but better. And all of that was done on this Chromebook. I didn't go to any other software programs from writing it to uploading it. It was all done with Chrome. So the first thing you're going to need is SFTP. And let me move this program over in the link. Of course, is on the web page uh, here at Dosky Communities if you need it. So this is SFTP. Now this is going to be black on your screen, but this is essentially my host information. You're going to put your host name, IP, server port, your username and password, however you connect uh, to your web server, and you're going to mount this. So once you click on it and you've saved it, so you're going to want to do keep after you do that so it stays as an option. Once you mount that, what's really cool uh, is that it's going to mount it in the file system. So now when we go here into the file manager, you will actually see it as a location, your server. And once you click on that, you'll see your individual files that are on the web server that we've uploaded here. So that's very cool. So now we can go into a tool like Carrot which is basically our text editor, which does a fantastic job. We can open one of the pages. So I'll do open file and we'll go to the Chrome OS. And now I have a basically not only a text editor, but something that can highlight errors and find problems with the code, et cetera. So a very powerful tool 
uh, and I utilized that to make this page here entirely. So utilizing those two programs, you now have the ability to execute, you know, JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, and be able to upload all those files and do basic web development with a Chromebook, which is super cool. And you can do some pretty cool stuff with it as well. Obviously, it's very powerful. But if you need other languages, there are some that are available within the Play Store, and you could go and research those. Or you can use one of those platform, cloud platform IDEs like Cloud9 out there, which are very inexpensive and will still let you get a lot of coding done. Your last option is you could use your Chromebook as an interface and have it basically log into the desktop with something more powerful, like if you wanted to create a droplet on DigitalOcean or even to one of the machines that you have locally, then it just becomes a console to that machine uh, that may execute more powerful programs. So that's an option for you as well. So can you, cro can you program on a pro uh, Chromebook and Chrome OS? Absolutely, you can. You're going to find some constraints and limitations, but overall, it worked out really, really well. I think we got a lot done with it, which I think is pretty cool. Leave your comments below. Let me know some of the things maybe you've done with your Chromebook that you were able to get done that most people might not expect you could do. Until next time, get out there and fill your brains. Go for it.